There are extra steps that you have to do as a disabled student in order to A, be successful, but B, just get a better understanding of what you're getting into. So yeah, let's get started. Hello, for those of you who are new, welcome. For those of you who aren't, welcome back. My name is Bonnie, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about choosing a program as someone with a disability because there are certain things that you have to do and certain questions that you have to ask that most people don't even think about before you choose a program and as you're looking to see what potential programs you're interested in. Specifically for me, it's going to be my experiences, so it would be applying to postgraduate programs in the UK, but a lot of this can be generalized to whatever program you're looking at and in whatever country you're looking at. So I wanted to kind of do a little rundown of my experience and what I had to do to, to kind of figure things out and think, steps that you can take in order to be successful in whatever program that you choose. For me, I was specifically applying to UK schools, but again, you can generalize to a lot of different schools in a lot of different countries. Um, it's just my personal experiences were applying um, internationally as a postgraduate student. So the first question and a lot, the question that I get a lot is, why graduate school? And this is a question that I get a lot from other people, but also a question that you should definitely ask yourself. Because postgrad is much different from undergrad in terms of workload, in terms of what's expected of you, and what you want to get out of the program. So you should have a good understanding yourself as to why you want to do this. Is it to enhance your employability? Um, to set a groundwork for say a PhD or research program or academic pursuit. For me, it was to establish a deeper knowledge of the subject that I'm interested in, which is key because you really do have to be very interested in your subject because if you're not, you're going to be miserable. So please know that you do have to have a very keen interest in order to be successful at this because otherwise you're going to just be banging your head against the wall for a year or two and no one wants to do that. So I kind of have that threefold thing of I'm very interested in the subject, I want to learn more, I want to enhance my employability and enhance the job opportunities that could come my way, and also I want to set potentially set a foundation for a PhD. Now there are extra steps that you have to do as a disabled student in order to A, be successful, but B, just get a better understanding of what you're getting into. And your first port of call is always the student disability services. Every school has some kind of variation, whether they call it the disability resource center or student disability services or something along those lines, but it's a department that is set up to help students with disabilities because they are going to help you get the accommodations you need, they're going to know more about accessibility, they're going to be that point person between you and the university, you and your professors, or just generally have the most information that you need in order to be successful as a student. They can help establish accommodations that you need um, and also ensure that those accommodations are upheld because once you kind of establish the accommodations you need, if you run into an issue with professors or with something where your accommodation that has been established is not being upheld, you have to be the person to go to disability services and get this resolved. But they are going to help you resolve that in that case. Another step that you have to do is establish medical evidence. And this can take some time, so make sure you get on this right away. Establishing medical evidence is basically getting documentation from a medical provider, whether it's a nurse, a doctor, a physical therapist, any part of your medical team that can establish evidence to your disability or to the accommodations you need um, and really basically confirm that you have these diagnoses or these conditions and how they affect you physically or mentally so getting those letters from doctors can be an arduous process, so definitely start early in contacting your physicians 
because they're busy people and sometimes it can take weeks to get the certain documentation that you need in order to move forward. Another topic that you need to think about is establishing accommodations. And accommodations are twofold. Accommodations in the classroom, meaning things that might need to be changed in order to have you be successful in the classroom, but also accommodations as in housing, where you're going to live and how you can establish something that is accessible to you. So let's start first with housing. And the big question is whether or not you're going to live within student housing within the university or outside housing privately. Now, if you're going to live within the university, do your research. A lot of um, universities have the halls listed and um, which halls have potentially accessible rooms or adapted rooms that could suit your needs. Now often you have to separately contact the accommodations department and ask, these are my needs, I'm looking for this, do you have a place that's accessible to me and what, what does that entail? Some universities have a policy, like mine does, that rooms that are needed or um, expenses that are above the standard rent price that are needed because of a disability or because of necessity will not be charged. You will be charged the standard room price rather than the um, upgraded price for, say, an ensuite bathroom or a studio apartment or things that are needed because of your disability. Some schools have that, others don't. So that's something to look into as well to see if they have that guarantee. Now, if you're looking privately, that's a whole nother can of worms and something that I'm currently going through, which is trying to find housing that is accessible. Some background about me, I am a an ambulatory wheelchair user. So I use a wheelchair, but I can also, I can walk for short distances. So it's um, it's something that I use for long distances, for classes, for any kind of commute that is going to be any kind of length, whether it is distance or whether it is for certain amounts of time. So for me, it's really important to be able to get my wheelchair in and out of wherever I'm living with relative ease. And so when you are looking privately, you really have to be very clear with your realtor or your letting agent to say, these are my conditions. These are the things that I need to have in my apartment or in my flat, because there are certain things that are non-negotiable. For instance, for me, I need to have a lift in my apartment because I can't climb stairs very well, especially if I have a ch my chair with me. So if I have my chair with me, it's really hard to drag a chair up stairs even though I have a manual chair. For a lot of people, that might not even be an option, particularly if you're a power chair user. Each individual has different needs and you have to think about those needs in order to kind of be successful in finding whatever apartment or flat you're looking at, whether it is within the university or outside of it. Now, the second accommodations are accommodations you need in the classroom. These are accommodations that can help um, alleviate some of the disadvantage of having a disability and also make it so that things are accessible to you. This can include extra time on exams. It can include um, having your space be wheelchair accessible, having to, um, a note taker in class or to be able to type your notes rather than handwrite your notes. Um, let's see what else. Taking breaks during examinations. Um, having accessible workspaces. Say you're in a lab science. Is your lab accessible to you? Can you get the things that you need within your workspace? Uh, do you need closed captioning for your specific disability? Will you need food or drink in your class? A lot of classrooms will not allow you to have food or drink in them. So that's something that you need to consider. Is your workspace going to be accessible? Not just your classrooms, but if you have other spaces that you need to access, um, any kind of research area, are they accessible? So these are things that you need to ask yourself and things that you need to figure out what you as an individual need in order to be successful at university. But then we want to also think about overall accommodations. 
and that is whether your faculty department is accessible because often the location of your faculty or department is going to be different from where your classrooms are. So how accessible is that aspect of your education? Because you will need to visit professors in their offices, or you might need to have certain resources that are housed within the faculty department that you need to get to. So is your faculty accessible? And also is your overall environment accessible? So that includes both the campus of your school in general, but also outside of your campus, the city that you're living in or the area that you're living in. Is it accessible? Are there going to be issues with getting from point A to point B? For instance, in my experience, I was choosing between two programs. I was choosing between a program in Edinburgh and a program in London. Now, I love Edinburgh. It's a beautiful city and I think it's just absolutely stunning and I would love to be a student there. But the reality was that there are so many hills in Edinburgh, there are so many cobbled streets, and there are so many buildings that are not accessible. That for me, I chose my program that I'm currently um, enrolled in in London because I knew that London was more accessible. While there are still places that aren't accessible in London, it is overall a more accessible city to me. So that was a big thing in terms of just choosing programs that I wanted to apply to or programs that I was choosing between is whether or not I could navigate my environment with the minimal amount of stress and the maximum amount of accessibility. Another thing to take into account is funding. Everyone has to pay for school in some way and there are certain things that you have to take into consideration as a disabled student because generally being disabled costs more money than it would to be someone who is non-disabled. There are maintenance costs. There are certain things that you have to account for. So are there bursaries or are there funds set up through your university that can help you with those costs? UK specific, but if you're in the UK and a UK resident, are you eligible for or do you have your DSA or disability student allowance? That can help. Um, I, as an international student, am not eligible for DSA, but there are certain funds in place that might be able to help me. So you need to look into how you can figure out if there are funds in place to help you or even specific scholarships that are disability specific or condition specific that might help you be able to pay your way through university. So that's something that can also be taken into account in terms of funding. Then there are other things. There are always questions to ask. There are questions to ask yourself and there are questions to ask other people. Questions for yourself are questions like, why am I applying to this program? Is this a program that is right for me? What do I want to get out of this program? Is the location of this program conducive to whatever my disability is? Can I manage around this city? Are there accessible medical facilities where I can seek care? All these questions are things that you have to really consider as you're applying to grad school and, you're, and as you're choosing which programs to apply to and which programs you end up choosing. Questions to ask other people are questions about campus, questions about accessibility, um, departmental questions, about accessibility within the department, within your classrooms, and has your department dealt with this type of disability before? Because a lot of times they have and they have things in place or they haven't and they need to establish that before you come as a student. So a lot of questions to ask and a lot of things to take into consideration, but overall things that really do need to be considered in order to be successful as a student. So personally, what I did was I chose programs that I was A, interested in, and B, were in locations that I would want to be in. So then once I was accepted to programs, I then chose, depending on location and depending on a multitude of different factors, where I wanted to be and where I could be the most successful. So that is kind of how I chose my programs. Now there's also the application process. So as you start the application process, it's going to be pretty standard in terms of what everyone fills out. You're gonna fill out your name, your, you know, all of, all of the details that you need. 
your statement of purpose, your um, additional questions that they ask, and those can vary from application and course. But there's always going to be a question about whether you have a disability. And you can choose here whether or not you disclose that you have a disability. Now, this should never affect your application in terms of whether or not you are accepted or not, but it can give them a heads up as to whether you're going to need services in the future and can help them set up immediately a contact in your student disability services. So for me, I personally chose to disclose my disabilities because it would make it easier in the future to establish the care that I needed in order to be successful as a student. So as you start the application process, be prepared for that question and also be prepared for what that means. You can choose to not disclose, but that can lead to problems down the line as well if you hit a snag and you need an accommodation that is not already set up. So, there are many things to consider, and overall, there are a lot of things that you have to do that are a little bit extra as someone with a disability. So overall, choosing a program is pretty standard, but also there are just certain things that you do have to take into consideration as a disabled student that are a little bit more challenging and something that you have to think of that's a little bit beyond what the typical student has to think about. If this was helpful to you, please subscribe, like this video, comment. I always respond to comments. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and have a great day.